Hi guys, I just woke up and I got a little bit of fool with me. We're gonna, we got, I found a YouTuber named Iron Pineapple. He does Elden Ring challenge runs. So we're gonna check out a challenge run today. I've been thinking about downloading Elden Ring, but I'm stuck on this part where there's a bull and he's like in a crater. I can't curse on YouTube. I'm not going to. Yeah, come on. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Should I be up here? I should be up here. All right. Let's go. DLC is designed for end game okay. characters. Level 150, fully upgraded weapons, armor, talisman, spirit summons, everything. And even then, it's the most challenging content in the game. But what if instead of entering the DLC with a fully prepared character, I did the opposite? What if I entered with a level 1 character with an empty inventory? That's what this video is about. So here's what I did. I reached the entrance to the DLC with a level 1 character, and then I discarded everything from my inventory. Weapons, armor, talismans, consumables, upgrade materials, all gone. The only exceptions were my Trevor. HP flask, FP flask, torrent whistle, and flask of wondrous physic since I can't get rid of those. From here, the rules are pretty simple. How far can I make it by only using things I find in the DLC? After that, anything goes. Like, leveling up is fair game. But there's one very important feature of this challenge. Since I'm only using things I find, that includes upgrade materials. So going back to the round table hold to buy smithing stones is off limits. Also, I'm restricting myself to only the first region of the map, the gravesite plains. This is mostly to make the challenge more interesting by limiting my options because I thought it might be too easy if I had access to the whole map. The goal will be to defeat the first major boss, the dancing lion. If I can do that, I'll consider this a success. Let's get started. I began my journey by trying to punch some enemies at the Scorched Ruins. I didn't really feel like spending 10 minutes to kill a single enemy, so I moved on to find a weapon. The first thing that came to mind were the Beast Claws, as they were available right near the start. However, to get them, I would need to defeat Mr. Loger. Now, I knew I had no shot at beating him in a fair fight, but who said it had to be fair? Oh, he's smart! <laughs> that actually worked! Bro, a genius! Do I get the weapon? I do, yes. And with that, I had a weapon and 3,000 runes to spend on leveling up. Hit buddy, leveling hit though, buddy with the Oki to the Church of Consolation so I could grab the two scattered tree fragments that were inside. Ebo I then rode over to the three path cross site of grace and grabbed one more fragment. I spent my runes on leveling my strength to 13 and my dexterity to 11 as those were the minimum required stats to use the beast claws. Next, I used the three scattered tree fragments I had to raise my scattered tree blessing to level two. This is the main Bro, thing people all keep his homework. The I ain't gonna lie too. It's impactful. Not only was I, I just now get in there and try to find damage, something, but my defense has got we'll bumped figure up it out on the way. Even with no armor, my physical damage negation had gone from zero to nine percent. That's not nothing. Anyway, That's I probably why I keep dying. To scorched ruins to try out the beast claws. That's when I realized I'd made a great choice. Beast claws can inflict bleed, and the savage claws skill on the weapon made it easy to proc bleed as well. The great thing about bleed is that it does a huge chunk of damage, and the damage from it proccing is the same even if the weapon isn't upgraded. So already, I had a viable way to kill standard enemies susceptible to bleed despite only being level 5. I killed lion a few more cop. enemies for some easy runes, but I still had to be careful because they could almost certainly one-shot me. I then jumped up the ruins to reach the chest at the top. Here I got the Blade of Mercy talisman. This was another great early find since it boosts attack power by 20% for 20 seconds after landing a critical hit. I then rode north to find this guy with a pot on his head. Always be on the lookout for these guys. Killing him was a little scary with the surrounding enemies, but I did it and I was rewarded with another Skadu Tree Fragment. From here, I rode north to grab the backhand blades to get myself another weapon option. For now though, I'd stick with the beast claws because bleed just seemed too good. I spent my runes to level up five more times. I tried using magic. magic. I considered vigor, but you I also thought I'd goes. probably get one shot regardless at this point. So one I'd shot it every that. time. I then rode west toward Bellarot. Every single time. On the way, I grabbed yet another fragment, so I upgraded my blessing to level three. Time every for the time. Dungeon. Obviously, I was doing this too early, but I wanted to at least see Can how bad it come was, close and on though. find some more tools or upgrade materials along the way. After running past the first giant scorpion, I was met with a horde of little ones. This is one of the reasons I love doing challenge runs. It turns what is usually a non-threat into an actual encounter where I had to be mindful of spacing and find the right level of aggression. Also, I noticed that I wasn't dying one hit. This was encouraging. Feeling confident, I was immediately humbled by a scorpion waiting to ambush me up the stairs. Nice. The second time, I baited out the attack and then ran past. Reaching the first checkpoint, I decided to spend all my runes on leveling Vigor. Even though most That's enemies still one-shot stuff. me, it seemed worth it for encounters with smaller enemies, and hopefully it would eventually be enough for even the big guys. Speaking of which, there was a big shadow guy just ahead. I kind of figured I'd be in trouble, but the Beast Claws managed to stunlock him, and this did the trick alongside bleed damage. It still took a while to kill him though, and I'm kind of lazy, so I decided to mess around with some good old-fashioned ladder shenanigans too. 
easy Oh my way. gosh, this Continue guy's a genius. I ran past the rest of the enemies and dodged the magic to reach the next checkpoint. Now, we need to be fun here, bro. This big guy and I'm dead. Give I him some money so he can boost stuff. I think he's immune to bleed, so that was a non-starter. The good news was that I noticed that not every move was a one-shot, so I definitely made the right call. You by can't give him more money than Terrence Howard, ahead, though. I defeated Terrence Howard needs a lot of funds to fund his. Missing Stone Six, my first flying gadgets. This was a good start from and Da Vinci. The first of many, because as a reminder, I was restricting myself to only use upgrade materials I actually found in the DLC area. I ran into the next room, guarded by more giant scorpions, and grabbed the bone bow. I figured this would be a great option to have once I got some arrows. Next, I jumped over some nearby rubble, which led me to a secret room. I was immediately immediately grabbed by a bug enemy, but I mashed fast enough to escape the grab before it killed me. Inside this area, I found another Skadu tree fragment, and right outside, I picked up the Dried Bouquet Talisman. This provides a 20% damage boost for 30 seconds after a summoned spirit dies. So Dude, if I ever found any spirit ashes, this would be a solid option. After that, I ran along the rooftops Man, where the stone board enemies are, and I picked up three level 2 smithing stones. So from here on out, I'm not going to cover every single smithing stone I find, but just understand that I'm pretty much constantly scouring areas to find them, and I'll update you periodically. Eventually, after a bit of trial and error, I managed to run past all the enemies except the final big guy at the end. I was pretty nervous. Oh my god. Fucked. And there you go. I'd made it to the checkpoint outside the dancing lion fight. I thought it'd be a good idea to at least attempt it to get a baseline, and I'm happy to say I dealt 82 damage before dying. Excellent job, me. I saw that I could summon Freya though, so I was curious how much she could do on her own if I summoned her and then just stood back to watch. She survived for 3 minutes and managed to deal about 15% of the boss's health. Not terrible, but she definitely wasn't going to carry me. Now seemed like a good time to move on. To the north, I grabbed the Great Katana near the Ghost Flame Dragon. I didn't have the stats for it right now, but I wanted it as another potential option for later. So far, we're about an hour into the run, and this is what my stats look like. I rode east across the Alec Great Bridge, and in the camp, I picked up yet another fragment allowing me to boost my blessing to level 4. Just north of here, I followed this path leading to a little room where I picked up the Spell I swear, bro, watch all the tips and tricks videos. magic damage negation to 42%. I decided you know to stop messing around and go to the place I knew I should have gone from the start, the Ruined Forge Lava Intake. Smithing stones would be the key to any type of success for this I've challenge, been watching a couple. and this area had a bunch of them. Now, I but I ain't watched as much as him. Grab the stones and left, I guess. But as a matter of principle, I wanted to prove I could at least kill one He's running around with no clothes on. For I have armor. For this, I went with the backhand blades since their blind spot weapon skill allowed me to get behind Oh, he got some swords now. From here, it was simply a matter of hitting his weak spot a few times to get him to stagger and then backstabbing him. The issue, here's the problem. Course, is that I was using an unupgraded I'm weapon. I'm watching this and I'm character. feeling like, all right, I feel like I could go backstab do this, stab him in the back. And even mm -hmm. a single mistake would result not in how it goes. shot and needing to start over. Not for me. I died again and again and again. Okay, and again. now look. Then, I figured out the he, trick. He's me. Assuming he wasn't pressed up against a wall, after landing a backstab, all I needed to do was run over, charge a heavy attack, and land it just as he was standing back up, and this would instantly trigger a follow-up stagger. I could chain what? this together indefinitely, and that's exactly what I did. In the end, this worked, and I counted 18 staggers to finally get him. I was also rewarded with him dropping a smithing stone 6 and 7 for my efforts. After this, I gathered up all the smithing stones in the area, That's the lack of hair people. the rest of the golems. I also got like a new script dagger throwing weapon. In the end, here was my upgrade stone situation. Not bad. However, this would all be for nothing if I couldn't find at least 12 level 1 smithing stones. I was worried about this since it was very possible I wouldn't find any more in the area. Don't never trust a bald headed man with no so clothes on. Wasn't an option. Why does he still have, have no clothes on? Outside, I tried to grab armor? daggers on the big ogre enemies. The dagger's damage and range is pretty underwhelming, but I figured out you can abuse the jumping heavy attack to land repeated headshots, and this leads to easy staggers. I had a pretty fun time fighting these guys. Next, I decided to take on Castle Ensis in hopes of finding more upgrade materials. I ran past all the enemies at the start, grabbed the Milady Light Greatsword as another weapon option, and then reached the first checkpoint where I picked up another Skydew Tree Fragment. From here, I started actually killing most of the remaining enemies in my path using the Beast Claws. I also used some good old fashioned like I need those claws. to take out a few dogs. Here's a fun strat you can do with the crossbow soldiers. They apparently hate walking. 
If you approach them, they take out their melee weapons, but if you back up even a little, they switch back to the crossbow. During this weapon switching process, they're left wide open, so I abused this to safely take them out. It was pretty funny watching them switch back and forth with no success on their end. Another fun strat, gravity is once again an effective option with the Black Knight. Just send the elevator up, stand to the side, and boom. Easy room. I eventually made it to the end of the dungeon, but sadly well, I didn't love seeing those little those um back to the black old. knights die. I went south until I reached oh, another Nicholas Cross. My God, and I grabbed another fragment. This was I enough love to it. boost my blessing to level five. Without more. leaving the starting zone, I think this is as high we as I can go. We need more. Up. So not only was I getting a 25% damage boost, but my damage more. negation was dropping 20% even without armor. Teolier was sitting next to the site of Grace, and I bought the Deadly Poison perfume bottle from him. Poison is always a gimmicky and yeah. potentially effective oh, strat in FromSoft games, so I figured it was a good option to have. Next, using the cliffside nearby, I jumped down to the lower region of the area, all the way to the riverbed underneath the Great Bridge. Here, I went through the waterfall and found the two-headed turtle talisman, which greatly boosted my stamina recovery. I also realized I had found some pants, so I decided to cover up. Next, I went to the Dragon's Pit Cave. Finally. And what do you know? I found six level one smithing stones right at the start. Ten minutes Huge. into the, vi the video, is halfway the over, had, he finally put I some pants on. To get a plus eight weapon. However, since I'm Freak. indecisive and didn't know what I wanted to commit to yet, I held off on upgrading for now. Also, I thought it would just be more interesting to see more of this DLC through the lens of an unupgraded weapon. Speaking of which, that kind of looks to tough, though. The pants the with the claws solid, and an O shirt, set, and it inflicts bleed just like the beast claws. I then found a path leading to the upper plateau area of the region. That's like and a I actually what kind totally of build is this that? On my first playthrough. While here, I grabbed the incursion painting. I also jumped down to the Church of Benediction and grabbed the Oathseeker Knight armor set. I put it on immediately, and I was still able to medium roll. And most importantly, my damage negation was now all the way up to 40%. Yes, armor matters. With this, I wanted to do another vibe check on the Dancing Lion. I also wanted to test out the poison bottles. Despite not having enough arcane to equip it properly, I could still inflict poison. The best way to do this was with the weapon skill, but this had the unfortunate side effect of poisoning me too. And sadly, even after poisoning the lion, the damage just wasn't that impressive, and it didn't last that long. Still though, using this strategy alongside the NPC summon, I was able to get him all the way to phase 2, which I thought was pretty solid given the circumstances. Anyway, back to exploring. I fought still one of the big health last. right at the start of the Crimson <laughs> Plains with my great katana. That and was after pretty a good. Minutes, I managed to take him down. He dropped the Curse Blade Mask, and when equipped, this boosted my dexterity by 5 at the cost of slightly reducing the healing from my Crimson Flask. I also rode around killing some of the stone birds because I noticed they dropped smithing stones 3, 4, and 5 at random. Then I found the location of the Incursion Painting, and my reward was the Serpent Crest Shield, a pretty great medium shield that I would also end up using. Next to this was the Bellerot Jail, and I decided to enter it to once again hopefully find more materials. I also tried using the Milady here just for fun. Pro tip I discovered, you know the human uh, flesh that thing enemies? Looks gross. They have a grab attack, but since it takes a while to pull you in, like I what? It, that's the stuff I'm talking about. Here I now I don't want to go escape. play this. Very good to keep in mind. I want to go play this now. To the bottom of the jail to the demi-human swordmaster. Because what? This guy is fucking awesome. And because I didn't struggle with him on my first playthrough, I never realized just how many moves he has. He'll deflect your attacks, teleport around, and do tons of magic sword combos that inflict frostbite. He even has a grab attack where he uses the force to toss you around. This guy is just a Yoda from the prequel. He was killing me in two to three hits, and sometimes this would come in one combo that guaranteed death if I got hit by the first attack. Like, I was look doing at my that. best using the look at that. This, and I wasn't seriously hoping to beat him. Oh but my I gosh, to try I'm and already I pissed off. I'm not even playing. You want the juice? You can't handle the juice. If you be the and I don't know, something clicked for me. I start off by avoiding his attack, and then going for a backstab. I missed the backstab, but missed I missed the backstab. I go in, jump attack, him up. and follow up with the light attack. He deflects yeah. this, but I discovered that the trick is to just keep attacking because I could still interrupt his follow up. I dodge the jump attack Gotham? and go for another backstab, but I'm not quite close. That's what yet. happens when Gollum still, though, gets the ring. I land a couple hits and proc bleed. You turn into One, this guy. Two, three. I avoid the grab attack and use the end lag to land a charged heavy, which leads into a stagger. Big damage, bleed procs again, and I get the damage boost from the Blade of Mercy Talisman. Then I land some more hits and figure out I can kind of bully him with the overhead stance heavy attack skill on my great. Just opponent. bully him. You're a hot. Yeah, get down. This leads to another stagger. More damage, and my buff is refreshed. I mostly avoid his flurry attack, roll away, and finally this time, I manage to punish his jumping attack with a backstab after he falls in a weird way. Goofy, that's what you get, demi-human swordmaster. overhead and light attacks. 
He starts landing more hits, Hans. but I just try not to panic and play safe. Another jump attack from him, and another backstab punish from me. I'll let the rest play out without commentary. Joke him up, folks. Goofy. Yep, Dang. I beat this guy with an unupgraded weapon. I was incredibly pumped. I also got his Spirit Ashes as a reward. This encounter reminded me of how good Bleed is. I went back to the Dancing Lion to see if he could be Bled too, and yep, it turns out he can be. With this knowledge, the Great Katana seemed like the best weapon choice to invest my Smithing Stones into. Before committing though, Blade I wanted him. to get more stones. And I also thought it would just be kind of fun to say a plus zero for longer. I went to the Fog Rift Catacombs next. There's a very easy to miss secret here. If you go up near where you can find the Great Ghost Glove Wart, you can jump off the side right here to get on top of the spikes. From here, you just follow the passage to collect the Spirit Ashes for the Black Knight Commander. Between this right and the Demi Human Ashes, I decided I wanted to try something. My teeth. So I started it's irritating my gums. Here. I also decided to go with the Black Knight Ashes since they only cost 111 FP compared to the 129 for the Demi Human. I was feeling confident after the last boss, so I tried to take on the Death Knight. Sadly, he was immune to bleed damage, so I was kind of screwed from the start. However, I did figure out you can punish most of his attacks with a backstab. Right as he finishes a combo, Joke him. you just roll toward Good. him and go for the backstab. You're learning. He's I did this learning. For six minutes straight, That's what we like. managed to deal a Bad little half of his health. But I sadly messed up, got grabbed, and died. I was satisfied oh, enough with that and decided to move on for now. Here's another smithing stone update. Basically, I just needed to get one more smithing stone form. So I went out to kill a few of the stone birds until they drop one. With that acquired, that was enough for me to upgrade my great katana all the way to plus 17, and I made it keen to give it extra deck scaling. Because the golems in the lava intake area dropped level 6 and 7 smithing stones, I technically could have grinded to get to plus 21, but I didn't want to do any more farming than I already had, and I thought it would be more interesting Much at a lower level anyway. From here, I almost felt ready to take on the Dancing Lion, but first, I wanted to kill the giant Furnace Golem outside. Now, I don't love these guys, and I think they take way too long to kill, even outside of a challenge run, but they're not too bad. It's all about just jumping over their attacks, wailing on their legs, and staggering them three times to make them fall over for a critical hit. Another pro tip, you can use the iframes from getting on or off your horse to avoid the explosion from like, the I'm attack. not fighting that. off running away, of course, but hey, it looks cool. Just, you know, be careful. The timing is pretty tight. After a few failed attempts, I took it down, and my reward was the Deflecting Heart Tier. This is my favorite new item in the DLC. During its 5 minute duration, perfectly timed blocks cost almost no stamina, have a higher damage negation, and as a bonus, guard counters after perfect blocks deal extra damage. Honestly, this item should be a talisman or base game mechanic. It just slots into the combat loop so well and makes defensive play far more active. To test this out, I went back to the Death Knight. I still use my backstab strategy, but I also mixed in some perfect block guard counters to stagger him as well, and after a few minutes, I got him. My reward was the Crimson Amber Medallion plus three. I equipped this right away. I know but he now, was happy. Finally, I would be so happy. The, main event, the Dancing Lion. I'm Here's happy for him. Look like. Only being level 65 with a plus 17 weapon would make this very hard, but I felt it was doable. I also decided to ignore summoning Freya to make it more fun. The first part of my strategy was using the Black Knight Spirit Ashes. Since I didn't find any Glove Wart to level him up, he would do almost no damage and get annihilated right at the start of the fight. Revered Spirit Ash Blessings hardly make a difference when the Spirit Summon is unupgraded. However, him getting killed was exactly what I wanted. With the Dried Bouquet Talisman equipped, I would get a 20% damage boost for 30 seconds after his death. As another part of this opening strategy, I noticed that the lion would often lunge in with an attack. If I perfect blocked with the katana, I would get knocked back and not have time for a follow up. But if I perfect blocked with my shield, I would stay standing and it would lead into an enhanced guard counter every time. From here, it was all about the jumping attacks to trigger the stance break. Additionally, every time I got a stance break, I would make sure to get another Why, hit in what for is bonus this thing even? What is this? Then, as the critical finished, I would get one more hit in as he was getting up. Little things like this add up, and I needed every bit of help. Also, I do want to mention that I crafted some hefty fire pots. My hope was that they would do huge damage during the lion's ice phase, but sadly, it seems like this damage is the same regardless of when I hit him, and it's just not super impressive. And then yeah, from here, it was just a matter of actually learning the fight and dying lots of times in the process. So after many failed attempts, here's how it went. Come on. Epic. Epic.
Yo, you gotta have balls of steel to play this game. You gotta hold it down. Cause if you panic, oh, it's not gonna work. Like what? Damn. Stab him up. I'm rooting for him. I was playing Liza Pete the other day and I finally beat a puppet king. Hey, you know the little puppet bro that cut him? Oh yeah, I did that to him too. So. More life. And this thing looks mad annoying. confused as to what's happening half the time how is he dodging that he's on you know he gonna start doing extra now you know his last chips at health they ain't gonna work though and there you go challenge complete I had beaten the Dancing Lion after starting at level one and only using things I found in the first region of the DLC. Fantastic. Now, obviously I could continue the run, but I think it's best to call it here since it would simply get a lot less interesting. This specific challenge is most fun at the start when you have nothing. And past this point, especially as I fully upgraded my weapon and gained a few more levels, I think it would resemble a normal playthrough a bit too closely. So yeah, nothing crazy, but I had a great time with this mini challenge. Whenever I do something like this, I always learn a few things along the way because of how I'm forced to change my approach for a normal playthrough. And this one was no different. As a bonus, here's how I killed Moog to set up the challenge on my level 1 character in case you want to try it for yourself. Shout out to Soul Obsession, a channel with only 23 subscribers for his video showcasing the strategy that got me through it. Basically, you go in with a plus 10 Bloodhound Fang, drink your Physic with the Strength and Dexterity Crystal Tears inside, apply Blood Grease, and then Shackle Moog. From there, if you just follow what you see on screen, this will just work, and you can entirely skip phase 2. I had to modify the strategy slightly by giving myself an extra buff. Hold him down, pin him down with Divine lower, Justice. Aside from that, it worked exactly as advertised. Turns out you can heavily cheese Moog even at level 1. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and keep an eye out for more videos soon. That was tough, y'all. I kind of gave me false. It gave me a little bit of hope. I feel like I could go play Elden Ring now, but I don't know. It gets on my nerves. And after that last bass boss battle, I don't know about that. I might just stick with Jedi right now. I'm playing Jedi Survivor. Check me out on Twitch.